then let's see how we do here. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay. And we are live. We are live. Okay. So let me get to the page because it okay. does this for some reason. So hang with me, folks. This is Donna Lewis with Breathe Life Ministries and Marcella Owen, our Christian life and health coach. And I am just getting to where I can actually see your posts here real quick. It's going to take me a minute, so bear with me, gang. I just want to make sure that I'm seeing the live. Yes, here we go. Here we go. Okay. So let me go in here. Christian Life and Health Coach. And I am. Okay. So. Yay, we made it. <laughs> we made it. We made it. So again, I just want to introduce. Oops. Hang on here. I'm hitting there all the wrong buttons here. There we go. <laughs> technology for you, right? <laughs> yes, technology. So this is Marcella Owen, and she is a Christian life and health coach. And I am really excited about what Marcella is going to be bringing today. She's going to be discussing faith, health, and wellness. So with that, let's just get to know you a little bit, Marcella. You and I met at the Christ, the virtual Christian Business Expo. Yes. And um, so tell us where you're from. Sure, absolutely. Uh -huh. I'm in California. Okay. In a town between LA and San Diego. Usually people know where LA and San Diego yeah. are. And I'm in Laguna Beach. Awesome. So it's a beach town. Mm -hmm. I lived here for about 14 years. I'll be married 14 years in October. Oh, yay. So we've lived here since we got married. So great. Where did, really you live great place. Where did you live before then? I still lived in the area. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Just a little bit more inland. And I went to high school here and uh, in the same town. So I've been okay. around for a while. Oh, in, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Um, and let's see. What is your favorite thing to do? on a day off you're gonna laugh well okay i'll tell you that it, it's kind of divided into two because okay. i'm a huge fanatic of spin and for those uh -huh. of you who don't know what that is <laughs> it's riding an indoor bike uh -huh. it sounds more boring than it is but there's music there's slides there's the energy of everybody wanting to get in shape and it's just a, a really great community so I love that. So I would love to start my morning with that just to set me up for the day. Right. And then in terms of what I love, I do like nature, mm -hmm. but I really love a good movie. Oh. <laughs> and I, I'm in my 50, well, I just turned 50 last year and I hadn't streamed anything yet. Oh. So every time I mentioned, yeah, I have Netflix, I get uh -huh. the DVD in the mail. All the millennials would think I'm crazy. They didn't even think that was available. <laughs> so, what? Right? <laughs> so we finally set up Roku because I really wanted Pure Flix, which is right. Christian entertainment. Right. And hearted and, and great entertainment. So mm -hmm. I would want to have a cup of tea and watch like a really great movie. Oh, I love it. I love that it. would be my, my great day. Oh, that's, I love that. I love that. I, I get the spin. I mean, I, I've tried it, but it ends up hurting. <laughs> yeah. You either really, really love it or you barely tolerate it. it it's right. just one of those things, you know? You're right. I think, <laughs> I mean, I love working out. I do. I love to exercise and work out, but I have to do it kind of at a um, a pace I can regulate, of course. you know, and and so for me going out and taking a really good walk or hiking or my, my husband and I loved bicycle riding. That was something that we but then long story, he got injured and that's a little that's a little challenging for him now. 
but we still walk and do things like that. So you know, I'm a huge proponent of working out mm -hmm. and I actually call it movement with my oh. clients instead of exercise because it sounds kind of like a chore. So right. find the movement that you love, whether it's cleaning around the house, dancing, you know, Zumba, walking two blocks, whatever it is, but moving is so important. I love that movement, mm -hmm. movement. I think, is this something that you talk about a lot in your life coaching where you want to make things approachable? Absolutely. And I love focusing on what people can have or what people can do. So on the health front, for example, if someone has a goal, let's say their mm -hmm. doctor gave them a protocol uh, in terms of eating habits, perhaps, or, right. or movement or right. releasing stress somehow, mm -hmm. then I like to focus on, okay, let's see what you can have. Let's see what you can do and not dwell on what you can't because what you think of expands. And so we want to make it a beautiful experience, a fun experience, and most importantly, mm -hmm. a sustainable experience. Because if you're doing things that you dread day in and day out, if you don't like spin, don't ever do it. Right. <laughs> right. 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 You love. <laughs> exactly. But I mean, Spin is, an, I mean, I, I can see why you enjoy spin because it really does pump up your adrenaline yes. and with the music and the lights and all yes. that. I, I, it's, it's kind of one of those things that maybe I need to think a little more open about because I, you know, if I think, do we, have you run into this with people that you've worked with where, um, they've, they've put a limiter on themselves. 100% helping them get that off. I had a client actually that gave me a testimonial that I can share with you uh -huh. uh, that says that she had this idea, this the mindset that exercise was not for her. She hates it. It's not for me. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. So we started talking about it and peeling back the layers, right? and thinking, okay, well, let's talk about what you do like. Well, I love mm -hmm. the dance. Okay, well, that's movement. You right. just had a negative connotation on the word exercise. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's dress it up as something else because everything, this is what I've learned, everything uh -huh. is neutral. Any, any word is neutral, any circumstance, any experience. We dress it up with however we want based on our experience. Mm -hmm. uh, so what she did was just dressed it up with negativity so yes. when we were peeling back the layers and understanding why and how and reframing that rebranding it into a new thought and make it consistent to remember every single day set up anchors around your house oh. right that remind you oh I love exercise I love dancing I and don't think about what you don't like Right. For example, I don't like HIIT training. I don't know if anybody uh -huh. there, boot camp HIIT training. I tried it. I wanted to love it because uh -huh. I have friends that it worked really well for them. Uh -huh. But it's just horrible on my body. I, uh -huh. I can't jump up and I ruined my knees running when I was younger. I, right. it's just me. But it works for some people. So you want to stick to what you love and dress right. it up in a, on a positive light. Right. So it works for you and you want to do it. You don't want to dread it. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Like, um, for me, one of the things that I realized is that I really love the fresh air and the sun on my face. So going outside and walking, but I need something that I can measure. Mm -hmm. So going to the track and walking the track for me is something that gets me out in the fresh air, gets me in the sunshine. And yet I can still measure my progress and know where I'm at. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So instead of going, well, um, well, I, you know, because I, I like the gym, but for whatever reason, there was like this mental thing that would go, oh, I got to go to the gym. Right. Even though when I got there, I enjoyed it. it right. Was right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I agree. I like the gym too. 
Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I do is listen to my, my iPod or, you know, whatever device you have. Mm -hmm. So what I think about, uh -huh. I think about the music that I'm going to listen to and the time off that I'm going to have, or if I want to listen to a book and I think of it as, oh, it's me time. And I'm going to yeah. listen to whatever I want because no one else is in the room. Mm -hmm. And I, I trick my mind to thinking, oh, this is a fun thing and a cool thing. And then once you're there and then afterwards you feel amazing. So. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So this leads me into um, what got you into life and health coaching? Yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. I've been an advocate of health and well-being for about 30 years. Since mm. 20. I, I just love well-being, health, eating organic, being outside, anything that has to do with elevating your health. Right. And somehow, some way, I ended up in corporate America, like a lot of us do, yeah. <laughs> back in the 20s. And I had a trajectory of being in corporate America for 27 years, learned a lot, business acumen, leadership skills, great relationships. But it got to a point where my body was taking a toll. There was oh. a lot of pressure. I worked in a sales role. And something was telling me, and I'm saying it's going to be God's voice, there's something else for you. So I took a look at what I loved most about my role. I worked for a bank. Okay. And what I loved the most was coaching and mentoring either new people coming on right. or people with a lot of experience, but coming from another institution. So had no idea what the culture was like. Right. Services were like. So I mentored and coached a lot of people. Uh -huh. and, and I thought, that's what I love to do. Mm -hmm. And then after a lot of prayer and thought and consideration, I thought, and I love wellness. Why don't I bring those together? <laughs> so that's when I first got the idea. And that was about five years, four or five years before I resigned. Okay. And so from there, I started getting certifications and understanding okay. the, the coaching role. And then I thought, this is really what I want to do. And inevitably, when you talk to someone about their health, uh -huh. other aspects of their life come in. So inevitably, your life coaching as well, because the, the main five areas of coaching is in health, career, relationships, finances, and spiritual. Okay. So all of that's intertwined, and right. somehow it all surfaces when you're talking mm -hmm. to someone. And typically, health struggles or issues arise due to other things going on in your life. It's not that you wake up one day and think, I'm going to have five donuts. <laughs> There's right. a reason why you are where you are at that season of your life. And I don't see it as a negative. Mm -hmm. If you know, someone gained, like through COVID, if someone gains a few pounds, there's a reason for that. We've been isolated. We've right. had nothing to do but sit at home. So, it, right? So there's a reason yeah. for that to think about it and then mm -hmm. figure out what the solutions are. So that got me into it. And then I figured, okay, who do I want to serve? Because when we first start businesses, whether in coaching or anything else, we think we want to serve the world because <laughs> we want to bring everybody in, but that's virtually impossible. I believe, I think we have niches that we want to target first and then yeah. expand from there. So my niche is women uh -huh. who are experiencing burnout, who are frustrated because their energy is low. Right. And I come in and I help them increase their energy, optimize their health and really recalibrate their lives because everything changes as we change. Right. And I started my journey in mm -hmm. the secular coaching space mm -hmm. and then God kept nudging me. Um, you, you want to go Christian, you want to go Christian. And I had a few Christian clients and I could mm -hmm. see the difference between secular coaching, which sometimes could be spiritual, but there's a lot of questionable things with new age, law attraction, right? And then right. you have godly Christian from Bible principles, Holy Spirit, where Christ is our Lord and Savior. And I thought my first reaction thought, God, really? Because 
I'm going to lose clients. I don't want to talk about Christ on my website. What, what are you saying? That's, that's not me. I want to serve everybody. Right. And she kept nudging me and nudging me and nudging me. And one morning I got this wave of peace. Yes. And I thought in the sermon and I thought, you know what? I'm doing it. Yeah. And I never went back and now everything I do has got in it. Yes. <laughs> and it's been a blessing. It's open doors to so much more. And I really love including prayer and the Holy Spirit in every session. And it's so much more powerful. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yes. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, as you're, you were talking, two things kept coming to my mind. Yeah. And even, you know, when we were just talking prior to coming live, right? Mm -hmm. And that is, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation. And, um, and then the Holy Spirit is the great counselor. He is the voice of wisdom, discernment. He searches all things. Mm -hmm. So to have, to, mm -hmm. we're, we're shooting ourselves in the foot when we leave him out. And yeah, yeah. And he heals. Okay. And, I mean, and restores. So, um, no, that's beautiful. That is awesome. Yeah, thank you. But a lot of people don't know it or don't understand it, even believers. Right. Right. Because when I became a believer mm -hmm. about 14, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. a, a true walk with Christ, because I was raised Catholic. Okay. But I went to Catholic school uh -huh. <laughs> in another country, but I never opened the Bible. We oh. had books that talked about Jesus, wow. but we, we went to church to mass, uh -huh. <laughs> but it wasn't the level of intimacy and connectivity that you have, I believe in, in the Christian faith, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that is so important to be in community and in fellowship to understand mm -hmm. how God's favor, uh, what that role is in your life. Right. And so I became Christian about 14, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And then I went to church every Sunday and I thought, okay. cool, I'm a Christian, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> and then someone approached me and said, hey, would you like to be in a year of discipleship so mm -hmm. we can talk about your journey with Christ? And I thought, mm -hmm. well, yeah. what does that entail exactly? Uh -huh. <laughs> and she says, well, we'll go, we'll start with the basics uh -huh. of salvation, the attributes of God. Bible reading, prayer, fellowship, witnessing the word. Sure, I'll check mm -hmm. it out. So mm -hmm. I did that for a whole year and I learned so much. Wow. I learned and, and since that time, this was 11 years ago. Okay. I was taught and I learned to be in the word every single day, which I thought it, at first it was too much. I thought right. every day? <laughs> kidding <laughs> overwhelming so, right <laughs> yeah. so you start oh I started as okay I'll do it I I have to and then I get to and then now for years I crave it right. and I can imagine not having that so I part of my business is a ministry in inviting oh. women to learn that and to right. be in connectivity and have an intimate relationship with Jesus because it makes such a huge difference in your life and it's such a beautiful thing yeah, so yeah. that's how I, I i got started i love it what an awesome story i that that is an mm -hmm. awesome testimony i want to take a quick uh quick look here and just yes. see if anybody has got any oh questions. sure yes so Oops. um let me just take a quick peek okay um oh let's see here oh we do we do so i'm just okay. going to open this up and Cindy's here. Hi, Hi Cindy. Cindy. I'd like to see you. <laughs> how uh, she's got a question. Okay. How would someone start obtaining the requirements to be a spiritual coach? Oh wow, that's beautiful. Even about doing it. Yeah. So I think that everybody's journey is going to be different. Let me preface by saying that because our walk with the Lord are all at different. I don't want to say levels. That sounds like there's a hierarchy and there's not, mm -hmm. but we're all in a different space, right? Right. 
So the first thing, and I'll speak for myself, uh-huh. what I did was my church offers free counseling, free lay counseling for oh. anyone that needs it. So my first step was to take their training, which was a third, and, and it's available to mm-hmm. anyone. I believe I don't Mm -hmm. think you have to be a member of a church but I took a 30 week uh, course and training very in depth uh, many hours and the purpose of that training is really to become a counselor for the church but that wasn't my intention I just wanted to get the basics I wanted to understand how you would coach someone from a biblical perspective. So that's where I started. And this was about, I would say five years ago. Okay. But the learning never stops. There Mm -hmm. are, I know of one uh, one, uh, course, one Mm -hmm. program that's available for Christian Mm -hmm. coaching specifically. And if anyone's interested, let me know because I can give you the name of that that person. Uh, But the learning never stops. And it's... uh, it's like Proverbs 27, 17 is iron sharpens iron. So a friend sharpens a friend. So if I'm not sharpened, if I'm not continually learning through Bible studies, through podcasts, through listening to different preachers, through community, right, mm-hmm. then I can't hold that space for my client to continue right. to grow. If my grow is stumped, if, if I'm stagnant, then I can't help my client to continue to grow. Right. So my recommendation is to find a coaching program that is suitable for you. Yes. This 30 day train, the 30 week training was great for me, Yes. but you continue to learn. Right. And mm-hmm. so I have courses and things that I take to continue to learn, to get deeper into the word, to understand how mindset works and things like that. Right. right. But if anyone's interested, I know of a coach that offers the program. She is Christian. Awesome. And I did, haven't taken it personally, but I, I've heard wonderful things about it. And then the other piece is the, the church where I got certified, and that could be a possibility too. Awesome. I actually, you know, Cindy is not the only one who is interested in this. I was actually talking to a friend of mine yesterday, um, and she is very interested as well. So would, would I be able to just refer them to you to talk with? if they were wanting to get more information? Absolutely, yeah. Have them uh, either reach out to me through Facebook, DM me, okay. anything. Yeah, I, I would be happy to share those few resources. Awesome, awesome. Great question, Cindy. I'm just gonna check yeah. if anything else here. Oh yeah, she's saying, can you send me the info for these? <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> yeah, and I'm connected with Cindy. I'll just make a note, I'm connected with her on Facebook, so. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Cindy. Excellent questions. Excellent questions. So let's see. Um, so we've touched on a lot. Um, yeah. Talk to me a little bit about this um, free seminar you're going to be yes. hosting. Yeah. Yes, I'm so excited. Yes. So one of the things that I heard a lot of in my corporate days and that I also experienced uh-huh. was burnout. Yeah. And I think burnout can be experienced in the workspace or at home yeah. with moms that yeah. work because it's work. Because I raised my my husband's daughter since she was seven. Oh, yeah. And I worked full time. Now she's 21. But <laughs> uh, I, it is a lot of work. And I don't even know how I did it working full time and attending to her because she lived with us full time. Mm-hmm. So whether you are at work in the office, working from home on Zoom or at home with the kiddos, burnout is very common. Yep. And we tend to when I say we <laughs> saying women. My husband's but... saying hello. <laughs> hello, husband. <laughs> <laughs> he just women... got home from work. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we tend to take the role of hero where uh, we want to help everybody and do things right. for everybody and take care of everybody. And somehow we end up at the bottom of the totem pole for ourselves. Right. So burnout is common and I experienced it yeah. myself in corporate, right? So I put together a workshop to help women and 
teach them how to overcome burnout, mm -hmm. how to release stress, because Excellent. we are going to have stress, but how do, we need to release it mm -hmm. and how to increase your energy exponentially. So then you can be there for your kiddos or your grandkids, maybe so yeah. you can be present. So you can be with your children and not have them be on a phone or iPad, right? Right. Be there and listen and be present and then be able to take care of yourself, have that right. self-care. So the workshop is uh, four days. Uh -huh. The first day I'm going to talk about what three elements you want to focus on for optimal energy. Right. Talk about that. The second day, we're going to talk about eating habits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's not what you think it needs to be. Because like I said earlier, I love to focus on what you can have. Right. And life can be fun. We can have delicious food and that's still healthy. It's right. just a matter of making selections that work for you because we're all bio individuals. We are very different. Mm -hmm. We're the same in terms of we we have ears and you know a nose and arms, but we we process things differently internally. Mm -hmm. So we want to identify what works for us. And then I'm going to reveal the number one mistake that we typically do that we want to avoid. Okay. So that we have that energy. Right. And then on day three, I do talk a lot about self-care and how the Lord uses self-care to help others. So my take is this, uh -huh. the commandment says to love your neighbors as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. But if you're not taking care of yourself and right. you're not loving yourself, how can you love your neighbor? <laughs> yes. Right. Yes. So I talk a little bit about that. And then yeah. on day four, we're going to talk about how to make changes in your routine that's sustainable, get rid of uh, routines or habits that don't serve you. And then I will share with you uh, a method uh, that I call evaluate, where you evaluate where your energy levels are at so you can figure oh. out where you want to go. Good. execute so you know exactly what you need to do to change your your health and then elevate which is elevating your energy for a long you know sustainably for the right. long haul. yes so that's basically what it's going to be it's completely free oh this is the most yeah. exciting part i'm doing a giveaway oh every yeah. day. and it's not a cheesy giveaway. Okay. Good. Excellent. <laughs> it's going to be a really cool giveaway every single oh. day. So, and I'm doing that for anyone that participates live. For anyone that is making time for themselves, that's taking this seriously. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do a raffle at the end of every workshop for okay. those who are there. And then awesome. I'm going to mail them the gift. Yeah, there's going to be four and I'll reveal them when we're there. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I love and then on top of that, if you can't make it, I understand they mm -hmm. will all be recorded and available through my Facebook group, which you'll get all the information if you if you register. And anyone that's interested can register on my website. That's healthandprosperitycoach.com slash workshop. And all the information is there. I love it. And this is happening March 15th through the 18th. Thank you. Yes. Yes. March 15th through the 18th at 10 a.m. Pacific. Okay. And I listed all the other time zones on, on my information registration page so people understand. I believe Eastern is uh, 1 p.m. Yeah. and then Mountain maybe 11 and then Central is 12, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. I love this. Um, let me think here. So, you know, one of the other things that kept coming to my mind as you were talking about um, burnout and low energy um, and uh, there was one other thing, burnout, low energy and, and then stress and stress. Yeah. All of these things could could actually be umbrellaed under depression, right? In a, in, in many ways. I mean, each one of these sounded like, as I was listening, I was going, boy, that sounds a lot like depression. Is potentially, uh -huh. and I have to say, I'm not a doctor, right. <laughs> but potentially 
it, it's just a matter of how you look at it and what you're experiencing. So mm -hmm. anytime I work with anyone, mm -hmm. I do a full assessment to ensure that I can help in what they're going through. Right. If I feel like there is depression mm -hmm. and I feel like it's beyond what I can offer, then I would 100% refer that person to someone that's qualified to address right. depression. Absolutely. Now, right? right? So one of the measuring things that I do is to find out, okay, if the person wants to change, mm -hmm. that's something that they want, because if you don't want to, it's not going to happen. Right. <laughs> I can <laughs> do everything on the book and right. it's not going to happen if you don't want yeah. to do it right yeah. and if i identify that there are deeper wounds or there are deeper things that are going on then i would recommend that they see a, a different professional and i have professionals i can refer them to although they can awesome. do their own research does that make awesome. sense awesome awesome so it sounds like you would be a good starting point for a person for sure um, and then even somebody who was experiencing a more serious, um, crisis in life or, or challenge in life, you would still be an excellent person to keep them motivated, uh, keep them focused, um, keep their mind active and pursuing, um, resolution and, 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 uh, and oh um i forget what i, I want to say solving you know right. solving. no that's beautifully said because as i make that assessment i can mm -hmm. assess okay let's work together or mm -hmm. perhaps they're already working with another a professional right another right. professional and i'm and they have a protocol to follow but that professional if you see a chiropractor a doctor right. even a therapist Mm -hmm. They're not going to handhold you through the process. They're right. going to give you a piece of paper and a program, go do it. Right. Where I come in, it's twofold. One, I'm going to support you, encourage you, stretch you if needed. Uh -huh. and, and I'm available through my programs every day. Right. I'm not, I don't say, okay, it's just an hour and then that's it. I'm available through different channels, right? And right. then the other piece that you're not going to get typically mm -hmm. with a, a typical or conventional professional is the God component. Right. I think that everything is possible with God as you and I were talking about. Yes. And also I think prayer and quiet time is extremely important in anything we do, whether mm -hmm. it's our health, our career, you know, relationships, anything. Right. And by including the Lord in what we do, the mm -hmm. goals that we want to meet, anything right. right makes it so much more powerful. Yes. And it combats the voice of the enemy. Oh. Like, can get nasty. Yes. <laughs> so yes. you need those tools, mm -hmm. which the, the word is the biggest tool, but you want to apply it, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a daily effort. Yes. So that's a huge component that you typically are not going to get through a conventional right. profession. Right. Right. Even if they're Christian, they right. still have to meet certain rules, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Through HR or HIPAA or whatever they follow. Right. And it's not okay sometimes to talk about that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So true. I love this. This is excellent. You know, um, it reminds me of um, one of the areas that I wrote about, I touched on in my devotional, and that was that when you're walking through healing, you need to surround yourself with experts. And, and each expert is going to offer a, a different perspective to guide you along the way. Mm -hmm. And it's so important to not just feel like you're going to do this um, like the Lone Ranger, you know, just, right. you know, you, you really, you need community around you. Exactly. And, but it's important to choose carefully who that community is. Right. 
Yeah. I encourage everyone to mm. have a mentor, have a coach, whether it's me or somebody else, it's right. fine. You're going to connect with your person, mm -hmm. but have that. It's so important. We are not designed as human beings to do life on our own. Right. We're designed to be in community. The Lord said, go make disciples. Mm. So we are supposed to be in fellowship and to sharpen each other, like we yeah. said, earlier, because we don't know everything. No. We can yeah. see things from a different perspective, mm -hmm. right? From an objective point of view. And I think that's very, very important if you're open to it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Not everyone is open to it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like what Jesus said Do you want to be healed? Exactly. Yeah. It, it requires effort. Yeah. If you keep doing the same things over and over and over and not changing anything, that's the definition of insanity. <laughs> so expect different re results where you're doing the same thing. That's not going to work. Right. 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 I love this. I'm going to check real <laughs> quick and see if we've got any yeah, other comments. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, here we go. Um. Oh, wow. We've got some really good ones. That <laughs> Cindy says, hi, Jade, too. <laughs> um. Is life coaching like accountability partners? That's a really good question. I think it is. I think it, it is in many ways. Uh -huh. And uh, there's different ways to hold someone accountable. Okay. And the types of coaches that, you know, I've had coaches all my life for the most part. Mm -hmm. And I keep having coaches because you, otherwise you don't grow. Right. right? So right. you have coaches that are very lenient that don't speak up maybe then you have somewhere in the middle where mm -hmm. they stretch you lovingly mm -hmm. but they do it but they don't bring you down where you're defeated right and right. then you have those hardcore coaches where they beat you up and they think that's the right way I'm in the middle I okay. don't believe in either of the other ones right right so, but I think accountability is very important and a mm -hmm. very uh great tool and, and good element for you to get to where you want to go right that accountability without looking okay you're you're, you're telling me you're going to do this by this time mm -hmm. you didn't do it. let's talk about it let's right. figure out what do we need to tweak so then you'll do it for the next time right because we're both we're both putting the effort it's not just the client it's also the coach because right. the coach is spending their time and their energy it takes a huge amount of energy to coach someone because mm -hmm. you're continually listening and you're understanding and you're thinking of questions to ask for to get deeper into whatever you're talking about. Right. So I think I think it is accountability. Accountability is definitely in the mix of coaching. She had one more question here. Okay. Let me see here. I've just got to blow this up real quick so that I can see. Sure. Um, let's see. <laughs> she said okay ladies so i guess my insanity is getting real <laughs> I need some mentoring. but she was also asking do you think the supplements out there now that, <clears throat> excuse me these days are the way to go for weight loss great question <coughs> well, supplement conversation can get very confusing because there are so many options Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm a strong believer that we are very individual. We're bio individual, as I said earlier. Mm -hmm. So we have to be really careful with what we take mm -hmm. because not one thing is good for everybody. Right. It's very individual. So maybe you take a weight loss supplement, like for me, for example, that has caffeine and caffeine does not mix well with my body. So okay. anytime I take a supplement, I have to make sure there's <coughs> caffeine in it. There's not matcha in it. There's no caffeine in it because I can't function. Right. So, right. So the best way I think to investigate that is to go to a nutritionist or do a sensitive, a food sensitivity test or um, they have those types of tests that you can even do in the mail to see okay. if you're 
allergic to anything or if you are um, sensitive to anything. Right. And then the other thing I look at with supplements is that it's as natural as possible. Mm -hmm. If I take the bottle and I read a bunch of chemicals that I can't even pronounce, mm -hmm. I personally stay away from that. And I try to find very clean products that are non-GMO, that are organic if possible, that where where it's sourced really matters is it synthetic or right. is it natural because our bodies are meant to be fed with natural foods natural supplements anything synthetic is gonna mess it up that's my belief i mean people there's so many different theories and that's why i think that it's very important to do your own research mm -hmm. and take control of that and if someone says oh this is a great supplement Mm -hmm. investigate <laughs> for yes. yourself even go to a nutritionist check out each each ingredient i sometimes look up each ingredient and see what's the side effect oh because good i don't yes. want to experience that right and then in all honesty i'm not so sure that you need a supplement to lose weight per se mm -hmm. i think there are other ways that are more natural if you're open to that right modify your eating habits a little bit make little tweaks mm -hmm. your stress levels your hydration your sleep is very important because i have a whole uh seminar on sugar just sugar oh, wow and i talk about solutions to avoid sugar cravings oh. and one of the items is sleep because if you don't get the proper sleep you're going to crave for sugar that gives you that energy rush sure but what happens is then you crash because your pancreas are releasing insulin so much of it and then you crash and then all it starts all over again oh, so man. you're on a side so you want to be really careful like I'm more on the natural side mm -hmm. I don't sell any products or anything like that mm -hmm. you know some people need supplements and I'm totally okay with that mm -hmm. but I would uh explore the side of natural first Right. So you don't have to take anything synthetic, synthetic wow. to your body. Does that make sense? I hope that it answers. Does. It, you know, <laughs> one thing that, what, that, that it does stimulate a question in my mind is you've got supplements, but then you've also just got like really good multivitamins. And exactly. Like that. But that would be different, right? Than, yes. Than a great a... distinction. Yes. I take vitamin D every day. Uh -huh. I take vitamin C. I take mm -hmm. fish oil. And I take a thyroid supplement because I have a thyroid imbalance, right? Okay. And some people go with the medicine route. I chose to go with the supplement route. Uh -huh. Now, I did get a blood work test to make mm -hmm. sure that my levels, I'm taking what I need. And that's very right. important. Yeah. Right. Excellent. Oh, really good question. I'm going to just see if we've got anything yeah, else here. Question. Yes. Oh, good. Okay. Cindy's got more to say here. She's got okay. some great questions. So let's see. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. She goes, yes, I feel the same way. We each need something different. I cannot use artificial sweeteners. Yeah. I don't really care for those either. Same here. Uh, natural would be something that could be beneficial. Yay. Now to find some. And she goes, I would rather do natural, but I do like the protein sm smoothies. Yeah, but that kind of falls into the category of like a good, strong multi multivitamin, right? Yeah. And then if you like the, the sweet, she said sweet smoothies. Uh, no, she, she just likes taking smoothies. It's, I am, and she doesn't like artificial sweeteners. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And Beautiful. she likes protein smoothies. Oh, protein smoothies. Okay. Yeah. And then on my sugar talk, it's not about going from, you know, we like sugar because sugar was designed for us to like it, ladies right. and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was designed and experts say that it's more addictive than cocaine. That's what they say. Okay. Ooh. So it's designed for us to like it, for us to get addicted to it. So it's not your fault. If you mm -hmm. love sugar, I stopped eating sugar years ago, but it, it took a while. So now when I eat something too sweet, I don't like it at all. Right. Mm -hmm. But it takes time. So you don't have to go from eating all this sugar to nothing because right. that's not sustainable. You'll, in my opinion, fail. <laughs> it, won't, right. it won't work. So what I teach is to gradually start mm -hmm. 
doing it and you can still have sweet things yeah we still have sweets in our life raw organic uh, honey is great mm-hmm. berries are awesome because they're sweet and they're low in the the glycemic index so mm-hmm. your blood sugar doesn't spike right? right you have stevia that i'm totally okay with There's yeah some- yeah coconut sugar yeah it's still sugar of course Mm -hmm. but it's not as bad as processed chemically infused sugar you know right it's just messes with your body right Right. so good sugar is good bad sugar is bad you know and i think fruit is great i've been i've been addicted to pineapple (laughs) mango and papaya oh it's so (laughs) good and when you mix it with a little bit of protein your oh, blood sugar is balanced and you're not hungry for hours. So you have a uh, good fat, you have protein, and then right. you have fiber, which is the fruit, right? The carb. When you right. mix those three, you're satiated for so long. Someone taught me that a, a holistic nutritionist uh-huh. years ago, and it's just an amazing combination because then you're satiated right. for hours and you're right. not hungry for sugar. It's just right. a matter of learning how to do it. So, um, right. yeah, when I, I did a five day sugar challenge in my my Facebook group, and uh-huh. I put all these ideas of combining foods. And, oh, yeah, awesome! And, and it's satiated. I love combining protein, like let's say a hard boiled egg, uh-huh. with mangoes, and a little olive oil. I know it sounds weird. It actually sounds delicious. really good. <laughs> I love figs. There's a lot of of options out there. Awesome. Oh, this is so good. Well, before we close, I'm just going to check one more time to make sure we got everything. Yeah, absolutely. Cindy, thank you for these awesome questions. These are fantastic. Well, that I'm going to say is um, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, please visit Marcella at, go ahead and give us your, sure, it's healthandprosperitycoach.com. That's the website and the workshop. If you want to come, that would be awesome. We'd love to see you there. It's the same healthandprosperitycoach.com slash workshop. And all the information is there and you can register there and you'll get an email with the zoom uh, ID to, to join on March 15th. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to go ahead and close down our live.